This is so lavish. This is like, I mean, look at this room. It's the former home of Odilo and Firma Esteves. Because they vacationed in Europe often. Five of the paint paintings were stolen in an armed robbery. Welcome back everyone to Rosario, Argentina. We are back here in beautiful Plaza 25 de Mayo. The beautiful plaza where we were actually when we made our video about the flag monument, which you can see it's like right down there, National Flag Monument. And today we're here to visit this building right here with the Argentine flags. That is a museum, but it is the former home of Odilo and Firma Esteves, a very famous and influential couple here in Rosario, Argentina. And inside that building, their former home, is a collection of like tons of super fancy art and old, like centuries old furniture. Uh, it looks super cool. And I am really interested in checking it out. So come along. Thanks for clicking on the video. If you wanna help out the channel and help it grow, I really would appreciate it. Click on the like button down there, the subscribe button and the little bell next to it to be notified for when new videos drop. It really helps the channel grow because it's gonna help the YouTube algorithm recognize this content and spread it to other YouTube viewers. If you'd like to support the channel monetarily, I would appreciate that as well. You can leave a super thanks by clicking this thanks button here and give a small donation to the channel. I appreciate your support. So back to the video, enjoy. So before we go in there, let's talk a little bit about Odilo and Firma. Estevez. They, um, they lived here in this house in the uh, early 20th century, right? They're from here in Rosario. They were both born in the late 1800s during the, uh, the immigration and construction and massive industrialization boom in Argentina. And uh, they were very wealthy. Firma Estevez, she uh, came from a family, a wealthy family that uh, made their money in steel, which of course was a booming industry in the late 1800s here with all the construction. And uh, Odilo Esteves, he owned a very successful herbalist company that imported herbs and sold them here in Rosario. So the two of them were very wealthy. They met in the early 1900s and uh, how they met and how they fell in love is sort of a mystery, a uh, mystery lost to time. but. Once they did fall in love, they used their uh, impressive wealth to begin collecting art. And not just to collect art in their house over here, which of course now is a museum, but they uh, were, were very, very important in starting the Provincial History Museum uh, in, the, it, like in Parque Independencia here in Rosario. They, uh, they had a they founded an association, the Friends of the History Museum, and they were very important to making the History Museum, the Provincial History Museum, what it was. So they were not just collecting art for themselves, but collecting art and artifacts and all kinds of things for, uh, for the rest of the people in the city of Rosario to be able to enjoy at the museum. Now, in 1944, uh, Odilo, passed away, unfortunately. And from there, it's kind of a tragic, sad story, because the story is that, uh, that Firma was so overwhelmed with grief that she basically secluded herself in the mansion and lived a very solitary life for the next 20 years. Um, she occasionally would see family members, and once a month, the story goes that she would invite the friends of the historical association, right, that founded the History Museum, over to, uh, she would invite them over and they would, uh, they would meet. But outside of that, um, she was essentially living by herself. And 20 years after her husband passed away, she passed away in 1964. And after she passed away, it was found in her will that she had donated the collection along with the house to the city, to the municipality of Rosario. And 
the city turned it into a museum. So now you can go in there and you can see all the uh, all the uh, really cool stuff that they had in there. The the old furniture from like the 16th century and and really really expensive super famous art. So I think we're gonna go in there and check it out. Now one thing that did happen was uh, apparently in the 80s, in like 1983, five of the paint paintings were stolen in an armed robbery. And of those five paintings over the years, four of them have been recovered, but one of them is still missing, which is a very, very uh, kind of crazy story. Anyway, I think we're gonna head in there. Uh, before we do, I have to find uh, like a napkin or something because a bird just took a dump on my leg. Ain't that a bitch. Anyway, we'll get that taken care of. Then we'll head in there and we'll see what they got. Before you even go in right here in the entryway, you can see the house itself. It's built all from marble. It's really beautiful. It's beautiful ceilings. Beautiful, uh, like wrought iron decorations. And look at this door, the main door to go in. I mean, it's really incredible. All right, we're inside, free to enter. And we're here. Well, I was actually right here at the bathroom, <laughs> cleaned up my leg. And there's this beautiful, like in the back part, this beautiful patio. An Andalusian style patio, open to the air. And this architecture is really, really incredible. Now apparently, this was like part of a renovation that they did because when Firma and Odilo moved in, they kept the facade on the front the same, but they did a lot of renovations back here inside the house itself. This is really, really cool. We're gonna go back out into the main hall. Um, the bathrooms are back here if you do visit and you're wondering where they are. We're gonna go back out into the main hall and see what they have here. There's the front entrance where we came in. The house itself, the building is like really, really impressive, but I mean, they have this huge collection, right? Of all these pieces of art that they collected over the years, mostly from Europe because they vacationed in Europe often. And not just art, but like old, very old, classic, expensive furniture. Some of the furniture in here dates all the way back to the 1500s. We've actually been We've actually been to uh, some house museums, right? Museums that people have, or that they have in people's houses, famous people. We went to the museum of the Casa de Dios, Diego Maradona, and we went to Che Guevara's childhood home. We also went to some houses of like some pretty rich dudes, right? Rafael de Sobramante and um, who else? Puerredon in San Isidro. But I mean, this <laughs> this is kind of another level, mainly because it's so well preserved. They they were such avid collectors of not just art, but also like classical furniture like this. And it's so well preserved because the entire collection, the house, and everything was donated to the city. This is so lavish. This is like, I mean, look at this room. Very, very lavish. And the art that's on the walls. Now, we mentioned some of the art was stolen and most of it's been recovered. But they were like 
very, very expensive pieces of art that were that were collected here. This is incredible. This room, I guess, what would this room be? This room would be the uh, like a salon, little little sitting room. I want to see these chairs. I want to see some of these, like this this vase or whatever this thing is. Look at this. Truly incredible. Also, a large collection of fans. These old, very intricate um, paper and cloth fans. Now, I've said this before. I think it's so amazing the way certain things have been preserved, but especially fans, these hand fans that are, you know, over 100 years old now at this point, and they're made out of paper. They're so well preserved. It's amazing how how those things have been preserved. Here's the matching one over here. Some more fans. And now they've put down these these pieces of carpet, right? To cover up where people walk, but these rugs also like everything in here, the rugs, the chandeliers, the furniture, everything is all preserved from when uh, when Odilo and Firma lived here. This place is wild. No joke, this place is wild. I've already, I mean, I've only seen like a few of the rooms. And like I said, we've been to different houses before. Houses of former old rich people. And uh, well, this is pretty cool. The only, the one that I think would maybe be more impressive, but doesn't really count, is the Museum of Gold and Weapons of the World that we saw in, um, in Lima, in Peru, because that was just one dude collected all that stuff. But it wasn't really his house that we saw. We saw a museum that he basically created. This is like their house. And the entire thing was donated. Hola, ¿qué tal? It was at this point that I was told by a very nice lady who worked at the museum that I was not allowed to film inside with my camera without permission from the museum's director. I asked, uh, where is the museum's director? Could I, could I ask them for permission? And she said, no, they're not here, but you can email and maybe they'll get back to you. So uh, I asked if I could take pictures and maybe film with my phone. And she actually said, yes, I could do that, but I wasn't allowed to film with the camera. So we stopped filming with the camera here and we took a lot of pictures because there was a lot more cool stuff to see here inside the museum. So this room, as you can see, is quite impressive. Well, I mean, the whole house is, but this room especially. I mean, look at it, just look at this place. And they had some very, very impressive things inside this room, including portraits of two of the former kings of Spain, this one of King Ferdinand VII, and also one of King Philip II, and additionally, there were other paintings in here, large uh, religious paintings like this one and this one that you see here. And of course, mixed in amongst all of this was also like amazingly well-preserved antique furniture. These antique little chests that are so intricate and, and incredible. And also on the way out, I noticed this which is a very old edition of Don Quixote de la Mancha by Miguel Cervantes. So coming back out into the main front hall, you can see right here over this cool fireplace, there is this very, very large tapestry up close. You can see how, um, you know, how beautiful this tapestry is. 
And another thing that struck me out here were these stained glass skylights. There were several skylights up in the ceiling and also stained glass windows, small ones like this along the uh, edge of the ceiling and then also some that were lower down at eye level. They're really, really amazing and I'm told that these were added by uh, Odilo and Firma when they were renovating the property after they purchased it. I also noticed here there were like uh, glass in the floor with something highlighted un underneath like ruins of an old building and um, a guide actually she told me that this was something that was discovered when the museum actually renovated some of the floors. The old floors used to look like this and you can see the new floors look like this. But as they were renovating them, they discovered the ruins of an old building that used to be here before this building was here. So, very cool to see these. And now, that guy, she was very nice. It's also the same woman who told me that I wasn't allowed to film with the camera. But she was quite nice and she led me back out into the uh, sort of the outer patio area and showed me this really cool salon area in the back. Uh, let me go in and take a look. I really thought that the ceilings in here were pretty incredible. And she also showed me the kitchen, which I always like to see kitchens in old houses like this. But this kitchen, of course, is very modest because um, Odilo and Firma weren't doing their own cooking. They had servants who would cook here in the kitchen for them. And now I asked our guide about uh, the different paintings that had been stolen. Of course, five were stolen, four have been recovered. And she actually showed me three of them. There is the painting of King Philip II that we saw from before. There's also this, a painting of Doña Teresa. And this one, the painting of the Assumption of St. Catherine. Now, the other two, one of them is like a picture of a painting of Jonah and the whale from the biblical story. But that one was actually only recovered very recently, like within the last year. And it's in the process of being restored, so you can't see it here right now. And the final one, which was a portrait of a young man by El Greco, that one just never has been recovered. So it's out there in the wild somewhere. Now our guide also told us that downstairs in the basement, basically of the house, there's a whole other exhibit. It doesn't have to do with um, any of the collections that Firma and Odilo collected, but it was there was an exhibit down there uh, about chairs. And I figured, let's go down there and take a look. It was kind of a small exhibit. And what was interesting is they had on a, like a map on the wall that showed where each of these different chairs came from in uh, in Argentina. And it's basically just like a, a, an exhibit for design of chairs. And as you can see, the chairs, the design of the chairs sort of vary um, depending on how old they are. It's kind of like walking back through time to see the different eras and how furniture was designed. And chairs are actually kind of cool when you think about it. There's a lot of, I feel like, artwork that goes into chairs, and there's a lot of ways for people who are designing chairs to sort of express, um, like, their... the artistic qualities, I guess, of the chairs. And some chairs have very, very cool uh, design, I think. So it was pretty cool to see this. Um, like I said, it was just a... I think it's a temporary exhibit that happens to be going on. I think they changed the exhibits, what's downstairs in the basement. Um, depending on, you know, when you attend, you might see something completely different. But that was about it for the museum. We saw what we wanted to see, and man, the collection inside was incredible. So, after that, we headed back outside. That was pretty cool. That really was cool. <laughs> Look, uh, we got to film a little bit in there before we were very, very kindly asked to stop. Sometimes, uh, you know, they'll, they'll ask you to stop and they'll be a little mean about it. But that woman who asked me, she was very nice. She explained it, that can't film without permission from the director. And since we're not really gonna be in Rosario for that much longer, we're not really gonna be able to uh, take the time to get permission from the director. There was a little different. We actually had to do something like this before when we were in Cordoba and we were filming at the um, uh, the Jesuit block. We had to get permission from the museum director to do that. 
and it took some time actually I emailed them and they didn't get back to me for like a couple of weeks so uh, the timing just doesn't work out but we were able to get some really great photos in there and what you were able to see of course and uh, the woman who worked there was really really nice too she explained a lot of things uh, a lot of the information that I put in the video there especially during the the montage of all the pictures was information that she gave me which was really really great that's a really cool place and uh, it's kind of a famous spot here in Rosario so I mean if you're coming to Rosario especially if you're gonna come down here to the flag monument which like I said is like just down there past the uh, past the church if you're gonna come here like <laughs> check that place out for sure right it's free it's got an amazing amazing collection and uh, the history of it, right? The the history of the Estevez family, um, Odilo and Firma, their history, and the history of how they collected all of this, and also like the uh, the history of how they were so like important to starting the the provincial museum here in Rosario. It's very very cool, and also like the spooky history about the. Uh, the paintings being stolen, right? Those paintings being stolen and then four of them being recovered and one of them is still out there to this day. That's pretty crazy. Pretty nuts. Anyway, right here in Parque or Plaza, uh, 25 de Mayo, right next to the old flag monument down there. I think we will end the video. And uh, this, was, this was a cool one. This was a cool thing to see. I hope that everybody enjoyed the video and uh, we're actually gonna only be here in Rosario for a short amount of time so while our stay in Rosario is coming to an end our stay here in Argentina is not so there'll be plenty of more content from Argentina to come and uh, we'll see you in the next one